How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to yet another episode of Critically Incorrect. I'm joined today by Charlie, if you wanted to say hi. Hello. Yeah, as you've noticed, Justin isn't with us this week. Uh, yeah, just life commitments at the moment. I'm sure it's either school or work or something like that. But rest assured, you know, we're still going to be continuing on with our weekly podcast as always. And yeah, uh, real quick at the beginning of the introduction, as I always do, if you have any questions or suggestions at all, make sure to leave it inside um, our comment section or in our Discord. But that being said, Charlie, what have you been playing for the last week or so? Um, so my playtime this week has been a little bit more limited just because I've been quite busy with university work. Um, but when I have had a chance to play stuff, it's mainly been multiplayer stuff. So quite a bit of Fortnite because the new season did come out on Tuesday. Um, that's been quite a bit of fun. There's some cool new changes this season, which I'm enjoying. Um, so I've been playing a, a decent chunk of that. Um, I have played a bit more Doom Eternal just getting ready for the DLC today, which unfortunately I haven't had a chance to play yet, um, but m should be doing at some point later this evening. Um, and yeah, that's about it really. Um, some more like League of Legends and Call of Duty here and there, um, but nothing crazy. Right on, right on. Yeah, I think we're both kind of like in agreement we haven't played too, too much this week. Um... Since our last episode recorded, I streamed Bloodborne as I always do, like right after the podcast. Um, for those that don't know, when I do stream Bloodborne, it's like literally right after we record this, um, even though I won't be going live today. Played a bit of Bloodborne with Zach. Um, I played, I tried out the Crash 4 um, PS5 version, and I like it quite a bit. I will say, like Charlie was also talking to me about this, it doesn't really use the controller that well. Um, which I'm, you know, obviously, like, I'm mainly playing it because it has a 60 fps um, performance now um it was capped at 30 on ps4 um it's also actually going from 1080p to 4k so it's a nice 1080p 30 to 4k 60 jump which is really nice so very smooth and clean image um i did br like i was planning on bringing my uh save file over but then i played the first level and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna replay the game in general so i decided i'm just gonna replay the game in general so yeah That's i'm not fun. gonna bring over my save file what's up that's i was gonna say that's one thing i forgot about crash i've had problems with crash since it came out oh, really? um on ps5 yeah so like i couldn't transfer my save because it was like oh you have to upload it from the ps4 game so i copied over the ps4 game opened it up wouldn't let me upload my save so I was like, okay cool i'm gonna have to start from the beginning and then i went to play it a few days ago and it kept trying to install the PS4 version. What the hell? Wouldn't let me open the PS5 one. Like, every time I opened up my PS5, it would recognize the disc as the, the PS4 one, obviously. Um, so, eventually, I went to uninstall the PS4 one, and it uninstalled the PS5 version too. What so, the hell? Uh, currently, I don't even have it installed because I, I haven't been bothered. So, yeah, I thought I'd quickly add that on. Yeah, the whole entire thing with, like, the ps5 having the ps4 and the ps5 version of games has been like widely kind of talked about since the ps5 has been out i think like i really just saw a tweet today about the avengers um situation and someone downloaded like 120 gigabytes for both versions so they could upload their save file and download it right and then when they deleted it i think it deleted their ps5 one as well so now they got to go back and do it again um yeah this is kind of a mess yeah the the way they've done disc upgrades for both Crash and Avengers is kind of weird, because like Assassin's Creed and things, you literally put the disc in, and you just select the PS5 version from the menu, but with both Crash and Avengers, you have to go onto the store and like buy a free upgrade. Yeah, I've noticed um, that. So I, I have a feeling that, that I'm going to have the same problem I have with Crash with Avengers, and it's some weird way that they do the, the upgrade, it glitches out um, with the disc versions, which is super annoying, but yeah. Yeah. Besides that, though, I did play, like, two or three levels of Crash. I'm not super far into it, obviously, um, but I'm enjoying it. It's pretty nice. Um, it's nice, like, the loading times. It's just, like, the best way to play Crash. Like, the loading times are fast, clean image, uh, very smooth, and I'm probably just going to replay the game. Um, I actually did play a bit of Resident Evil 5 just last night with my cousin. I've been playing it through with him. Um, yeah, very, very fun. And we're just slowly chipping away at that. And then I guess I can speak for both Charlie and I. We've also been playing the new Fortnite update. Um, that dropped, I want to say, Tuesday, right? Two days ago. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been fun. And, yeah. Uh, for me, I mainly started watching Attack on Titan this week. I know I'm probably going to talk about it a bit here, just because I know a lot of people that watch our podcast happen to be very, you know, big fans of the show. Um, yeah, they finally convinced me to watch it. I think I tweeted, like, a week ago, like, what should I watch after Cowboy Bebop? And, you know, one of the suggestions was, you know, Attack on Titan. I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to see what the show's about. 
And yeah, I got into it quite a bit. It's a lot different than I expected it when everyone always talked about Attack on Titan. Um, I'm in the thick of it right now. Like, I'm near a turning point of the story, I want to say. Um, at least it feels like it. I'm middle of season two, and yeah, it's pretty good so far. I uh, just can't wait to, you know, watch more of it. Definitely pretty impressed by it. And yeah, Stan, uh, Levi. <laughs> Everyone loves Levi, but yeah. I know, Charlie, you said you watched, like, episode one, so you can't really, like, we can't really talk about it too much. So, like, yeah, even yeah. if I wanted to go into, <laughs> like, deep conversations about it, I don't want to spoil it for Charlie. And the off chance that he does watch it in the future, but um, yeah, you have been watching something. free next yeah. month, right? So maybe I'll, I'll watch some then, but it depends how busy I am. So. Do you want to talk about what you've been watching? I mean, yeah, sure. Um, so since Brandon's gonna, he like, he's really into his Attack on Titan... Obviously, I have to talk about the Snyder Cut, which came out today, um, which is like basically the the way better version of Justice League, which came out nearly four years ago now. Um, it came out today. It's like four hours long. Um, I watched it this afternoon, and I've got to say, it's really, really good. Um, I'm really glad that it turned out like it did. There, there's obviously some problems. I, I've seen some people say online, like with Zack Snyder, you always get, if you want the best of Zack Snyder, you also get the worst. Like, he, he comes with some downsides with the way he directs films. Um, and there are some problems with it, but it's far superior to what we got um, a few years ago. I highly recommend it to anyone that's interested in watching it. Um, it is a long film, but there are, like, it's split into parts. So if you want to take a break, it's very easy to. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend it to anyone. It is, I, I feel like if you didn't like Man of Steel and like the ultimate cut of um, Batman v Superman, then you probably won't like this because it is like those films. I, the reason I say ultimate cut of Batman v Superman is like the theatrical version of that film is not great. Um, but yeah, this is a very different film to what we got a few years ago. Uh, I just hope that it does well enough that maybe WB give... Zack a chance if he wants to 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 continue the story because it does still set up sequels um because it is literally his original vision so it has all the post credit scenes and stuff it would have had if it released when it did um so yeah hopefully it, something happens with it in the future but i'm glad we got it i never thought we would so yeah yeah i was gonna say it feels like it's like a meme everyone is always saying release the snyder cut it's like weird that the snyder yeah. cut actually came out today um I was going to ask, like, going forward, it's just like a spinoff thing for HBO Max, right? Like, obviously, the Justice League that came out years ago, as I'm guessing, is going to still be considered the official one, or what? Yeah, so they, they've they said that the one from 2017 is the canon version of Justice League, which makes sense. That DC have decided they want to go in a very different direction now, and I, I don't blame them for it. Um, Zach always had a very different vision for DC compared to what Marvel have done. Um, and I think DC want to move in the direction of having a big universe with all these fun, wacky characters. Um, and whilst I think that's cool, DC is a big multiverse, and I think it'd be great to have Zack do his thing in his own multiverse on HBO Max. Right now, it doesn't look like that's the plan. WB said a few days ago in um, like a shareholder meeting that they don't see the Justice League uh, Snyder Cut. They see it as a cul-de-sac. They worded it like it doesn't go anywhere it'll just this is the end of that um and for them i i think they're hoping <laughs> that they don't have to pump more money into it but if it makes them a ton of money yeah, i feel sure. like their opinion will very quickly change um i do know i saw on twitter some people were saying that hbo max like crashed multiple times today um presumably because so many people are trying to watch the snyder cut which i hope is the case um because it just means there's a lot of uh, hunger to to watch it finally, um, but I am I am interested to see like fan reactions because overall like uh, press reactions and things have have been pretty positive. There's so, there are negative reviews out there like Gamespot like absolutely hated it, mm -hmm. which is uh, funny because they actually gave I believe they actually gave a positive review to Justice League way back when it came out. So that's uh, interesting to note. Um, but overall, it's, it's done well with press, so I'm interested to see more fan reactions, um, just to see if more people feel the same way as me, which I'm sure they will, um, but also for people that, you know, just watch it as it's something to watch, I'm sure there will be a ton of people that 
see it pop up and go, oh, you know what, I'll give this a go, and whether they like it as much as I do, um, because it is obviously filled with fan servers for the people like me who wanted this for years, so, um, we'll see, yeah. Yep, so that's out today as on HBO Max. It's definitely cool to see, like, streaming services have been booming since the start of COVID. Like, they already were booming. Obviously, Netflix was, like, incredibly popular for, like, the last, well, I want to say half decade or so. But definitely with COVID, it's just been, like, booming, and we'll see that with Disney Plus, too. Um, I guess to kind of, like, tunnel that into the releases this week, yeah, um, the Snyder Cut came out on HBO Max. I guess if we want to talk about it... um, Marvel's, you know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is also coming out tomorrow as well on Disney+. Plus. Um, in terms of game releases, though, Marvel's Avengers Next Gen Patch just hit today. Uh, I think me and Charlie are currently downloading it, so we'll probably have thoughts on that for next week's episode. Um, Doom Eternal, this is the, what What do they call it? The God... Um, Ancient Gods. Ancient Gods DLC 2. Um, that's also out today. So yeah, Charlie has a busy day, because I know you're looking forward to the Snyder Cut, what you just watched, <laughs> and you're going to be playing Doom Eternal and might even be streaming it after this podcast. So yes. definitely a pretty big day for you, which is cool. And I guess, as we're mentioning it, Beat Saber OST4. So damn, it's like everything is coming out for you today. Um, <laughs> I, I tweeted this yesterday. I was like, it feels like this day was like, like planned for me in mind and the only way it could get better is factions to announce which didn't happen but you know come on neil you have to you have to ask you know gotta ask yeah and then yeah to finalize the releases this week as we mentioned earlier fortnite chapter 2 season 6 as well but anyways going into the gaming news we're recording this right after the square enix showcase which just happened today and i think for me like my expectations were like about what we got i was even kind of surprised they showed off project athia to be honest so if anything, they kind of were higher than what we got. Um, just to go over the highlights, Life is Strange, the new game that we talked about last week, is going to be called True Colors. It's going to be out on September 10th. It's interesting to note that this game actually won't be episodic for the first time. This is going to be a full-on game. So I know a lot of people hated the episodic format because you'd obviously play through the story, right? And then you'd have to wait months, and then you'd kind of like forget what happened, I guess. Um, now you could just binge it all the way through, right? So True Colors is out on September 10th. That's interestingly enough made by Deck Nine. This isn't Don't Nod, so... Um, they're the developers that made Before the Storm, so pretty interesting there. What were you going to say? I was just saying, uh, so I guess it means it's not really Life is Strange 3 then, right? Yeah, like, I mean, I, like the way the leaks were talking thing. about it before this game came out is like they were kind of treating it like Life is Strange 3, but if they don't have the number 3 at the end, I'm guessing they're just going to call like the big Don't Nod releases as you know the sequel, like the actual I mean, full-on th- 3. This is also like full price as well. Like, yeah, I, so I I'm re- guessing... Like, I l- mm-hmm. Like, I, when I looked at it on Steam and stuff, like, it's it's £50, pounds, so it'll be, like, a $60 game, which is more expensive than all the other ones, right? So Yeah, it's a full Life is Strange game in that way, so, like, it is technically, I guess, Life is Strange 3, right? But I imagine Don't Nod's working on their own Life is Strange project. I'm not sure what they're currently working on. I know they were working on something else that we, I don't know, weren't... What are they currently they working on? tell me why. Yeah, so. I was going to say, they came out with that, like, <laughs> I want to say in August, so... Who knows what they're doing? Um, Maybe they just wanted to get away from Life is Strange and they wanted to leave it to Deck Nine. Who knows what the future of this series is. But for now, we got Life is Strange True Colors and then they also announced a Life is Strange Remastered. Um, Life is Strange Remastered, you said, is coming out fall, right? So a little interesting there. So I'm guessing... It's weird they say fall, right? Because if this this comes out after True Colors, that's, I guess, a little weird. But um, yeah, both of those are coming out this fall, I guess, technically. Um, If you want to count True Colors at the very end of summer. Um, so that was like kind of the big, you know, focus there. They also showed off Project Athia, which finally got a full name called Forspoken. Um, that's going to be coming out next year for PS5 and PC. I know there was like some kind of digging around in terms of like, I think PlayStation uploaded with like the wrong description. And apparently this is like the successor to what initially was like Project Witch or something like that, or that was like another name for it. Um, this was like a project I want to say that was in development back in like 2012, 2013. So if people kind of put two and two together and realize that this is connected to that. They showed off like a brief cinematic and at the very end they showed off some gameplay that was similar to what we saw at the initial PS5 event. Um, yeah, it looked pretty cool in my opinion. I don't know. Like nothing's really changed. I thought the game still looks interesting, but yeah, I mean, what did you think about it, Charlie? Yeah, I, I think it looks cool. Um, I will say initially, like I watched this trailer after the event ended Mm -hmm. and like the dialogue seemed really weird. (laughs) I was like, I don't really know what's going on. Like, the the main character shows up. She just goes, is that a motherfucking dragon? I noticed that. I was like, and, okay. And I was like, uh, uh sure. <laughs> like, it just seemed really out of place, because it's, like, fantasy and, like, 
not real world so i don't know yeah, it's exactly. super weird it's a um, weird thing to show <laughs> yeah yeah um but it looks cool like the movement looks really interesting so i, I want to see how that works that looks really fluid and, and cool um but yeah i i just hope we get to see more of it because like we still don't really know too much about it i can already tell you now that people are not going to remember that name like it's super weird like i've never heard Frey holland or life. something or are you talking no, about no, the, I mean, the name the of the game? game? Title. Yeah, Forspoken. Forspoken. Dude, I, I, I was looking for the trailer Forsaken. and I typed in Forsaken. Yeah, I typed in Forsaken. Yeah. I found nothing. I'm like, isn't it Forsaken? And I was like, oh shit, it's Forspoken. Yeah. Interestingly, yeah. Um, a couple of people um, that I've spoken to have said that uh, uh, the people from the Final Fantasy XIV community initially thought the new expansion was called Forspoken. Um, hmm because this name was trademarked around the same time they normally trademark the expansion names so people thought like i don't know what the one this year is called for final fantasy but they thought it was forespoken so this name was already kind of known in the final fantasy community but i don't think anyone really picked up on it okay. um because they all thought it was final fantasy 14 related, related and not for athia gotcha. um so yeah Yep, so as we kind of expected, nothing came out in terms of Final Fantasy news. This was obviously expected since we had this data play, what, a few weeks back, and they showed off, you know, the new um, releases for Final Fantasy VII in terms of the mobile apps as well as, you know, the PS5 release. Um, There's no mention of 16. I'm guessing that's going to be saved, obviously, for when Sony has their next big event, right? Probably, I imagine, sometime in June. Um, there's people theorizing that since Project Athia and Forspoken, you know, essentially the same game, right? It's coming out in 2022. Um project or i guess final fantasy 16 rather might be coming out this year possibly by the end of the year do you think that final fantasy 16 will make it by the end of the year or no i think it's next year i don't, I don't think it's this year I, I think we know too little for it to be the only year, thing possibly. i will say that has it like in at least my eyes possibly coming out this year is that that initial reveal was quite lengthy like they showed off quite a bit of that game yeah it, they sh they showed a surprising amount um mm -hmm. there has also been like a ton of information i know law wise like they posted a lot on their website late last yeah. year um so hey it could be targeting this year but i just don't see it happening this year at all yeah um i think next year seems way more likely um especially due, co due to covid right yeah i, I mean it, you also can't imagine it's it's been in development for like a crazy long time because it's not like ps4 i mean we it's waited PS5 quite a bit PC. like yeah because like and final fantasy see... 15 came out like what 20 i want to say 2015 2016 2016 right yeah but a lot of that team worked on kingdom hearts 3 so uh, okay. that was their main project and then a lot of them moved over to final fantasy 7 remake so like i can't imagine it's been i'm sure it's been in development for a long time but not with a massive team mm -hmm. um and from what I know, this is made up of a new team, right? It's not the normal Final Fantasy team. Like, it's not the main people behind it. I think um, we'll see it by spring, is that's my guess. Because I feel like they're uh, definitely, like, they showed off quite a bit, which tells me, like, that also event kind of focused on games coming out in, like, the first year or two. So I feel like this mm -hmm. game isn't too far away, but I feel like calling it, you know, a fall title is kind of a bit of a stretch. But hey, we saw, what was that other game we saw from, uh, is it Capcom? They showed off that game with the spacesuit thing. Looks like 2020. Oh yeah, that was the, yeah, that was what was that game called? I have no idea what it's it called. Called but yeah, I know exactly. What it, everyone it that's listening knows what we're talking about. Shock yeah, thing. with the cat kind of <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no idea. I think that one's also coming out what twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah, so that we'll was like really far away as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if if Final Fantasy isn't this year. It would be cool if it is though. It would make this year yeah. even better. So. I think no one would you know complain about that. Definitely looks interesting in my eyes. Uh, last two announcements, I guess I'll mention briefly here. Uh, I guess one for the showcase itself. Marvel's Avengers, of course, was here. They kind of reminded you that you know, next-gen update's coming out today, as well as they showed off Black Panther. Um, this update's coming out later this year sometime. Looks pretty cool. I watched the trailer briefly. Um, we'll be exploring Wakanda, which looks really cool. I think a lot of people are excited about this, You know, even though Marvel's Avengers hasn't been in the best light. I think I saw like overwhelmingly positive you know, reaction to this because it just looks really cool. Um, Obviously, like me and Charlie kind of talked about this a bit in the past, like this game doesn't really have a strong roadmap at the moment. Like we don't know when this is coming up besides later this year, but even that, like things like Spider-Man wasn't even mentioned here, which is apparently supposed to be coming out by like summer, I heard online. So it's kind of weird and up in the air at the moment, but at least they kind of talked about that um, and showed it off here. 
Um, I think me and Charlie also talked about this a while back, but like Black Panther was, I believe, initially supposed to be revealed back in their like September um, war table. But obviously due to the passing of Chadwick Boseman, they probably decided to push it back because that wasn't the right time to talk about it there. So we'll see what the future of this game holds. But yeah, I think the saddest thing about it is that the community is like super excited about the roadmap and stuff. Mm -hmm. I look at it and go compared to any other game, people would be complaining Mm -hmm. But because there has been such a drought in content for this game, the community sees anything and they freak out, which is kind of sad to see. Not (laughs) the right. They didn't really announce anything, and yet people are getting really excited. Uh, I am also a little bit worried because they called it the, I think it's War for Wakanda or whatever, expansion. Yeah. And they didn't call any of the other updates expansions, which worries me they're going to charge people. They did clarify Um, this. I think I saw online. They said that everyone that owns the game, it's going to be a free update okay i saw that so unless i misread that it should be a free update i i hope so because like, yeah all the stuff they mentioned there it's like new area new if they make it paid i i that game is beyond saving like i don't know yeah, what exactly. square enix is doing if they make that update paid um but like outside of that there's just not much coming like the raid that was meant to come out at launch is just summer like we still don't have a date it also mentions on the roadmap all this uh, content is subject to change or move dates. So, like, I would not be surprised if Black Panther does not come this year. Like, I it just, to me, it doesn't seem like the content's not out yet because it's not ready. It's more that Square Enix don't want to keep funding the game, and so they're stretching out content that has already been in the works for a while over a longer period of time than initially planned. i imagine they have to be working on some other big single player game or something like that right now and they're just having yeah, this as I, like a side burner thing because they they've said that they're in pre-production for a new tomb raider game now oh um, shit really yeah they they announced that back back at the few, 25th anniversary ago. yeah they said that they were working on whatever's next for tomb raider cool um so like I imagine that when the sales numbers came in for Avengers, Square Enix basically said, hey, you've got all this content you're working on, rather than get it out as soon as possible, and then we're going to have a massive content drought, stretch it out over the next year or two, so that it looks like we have stuff coming, um, but in reality, we'll stop the content after like a year and a half, two years or something. It's a shame, because so like, this game has like such good potential. Yeah, like I, I just don't see it getting support past like the Black Panther update. I think that will be literally it, honestly. Um, unless by some miraculous miracle they they get a ton of players in and sell a ton of copies, which just isn't gonna happen. Um, yeah. I mean, if you were in the Twitch chat, you would see that <laughs> like there was like no positivity around when it came on screen. Like when Avengers showed up, everyone was like, "Dead game, trash game." <laughs> like skip i'm like okay cool yeah this is how everyone feels about this so uh yeah yeah. it's gonna be a tough journey for them if they want to get people buying the game though they've got a long way to go so yeah it'll be interesting to see where we're at like i say from like a year from now it'll be interesting Mm -hmm. um the last news story i guess this wasn't really in the event itself just a regular xbox news story outriders obviously the game from square enix as well is going to be coming to game pass at least on console day and date so as long as you have like an xbox or you know you could stream it through their app um, that will be coming day and date that's a pretty big get for them alongside obviously all these bethesda games Uh, i think they also announced that ea play is coming to pc that was something that ea play was a part of game pass um on console but they announced this week that it's coming to pc so definitely game pass is getting stronger and stronger and it's pretty cool to see um yeah another news dying light 2 finally got an update i think we talked about this last week um that there was like a planned update i don't know why they announced it beforehand because i feel like they should have just dropped this out of nowhere it wasn't that big of an update they essentially kind of were just reading tweets out and like making fun of it and then at the very end they showed off some gameplay um said they're still on track for 2021 and that um essentially they'll share more updates soon and that they announced the game too early so a bit of an update there charlie what'd you read from that because i know you haven't really been exactly you know positive on you know the direction of this game yeah like i don't know it, to me that they, they, they did the worst thing they possibly could is that they told people it's okay to be mean to developers um they literally say in that video like after reading out like really like rude tweets and i'm sure there's way more offensive ones out there that they didn't read out 
but they literally say afterwards, they're like, oh, whether it's rude or not, like, we see that you care about this game. It's like, no, that's not like you what should you be should encouraging be saying. saying that. Yeah, you, exactly. You're literally encouraging people to do this, which is awful. Um, so they, they should not have done that. That was a terrible way of doing it. Also, they didn't really say anything here. It was yeah. literally them saying, we'll have more very soon, and it is this year, don't worry. What this uh, read like is it's we're going to get an update at E3 time period and like in the summertime, and this is just like some kind of like quick, you know, hey, we're not dead, yeah. it's still coming out this year, uh, stay tuned for more information, which is why I said they should have just dropped this out of nowhere instead of just saying, oh, here's an update coming no, out. It, yeah. So many people are expecting a date, and I don't blame them. Like I, when you read it, it was just like a project update or something they said. So I knew it wasn't going to be a release date. But even then, it's like don't give us like a week beforehand to anticipate this event. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Like to me, this is just going to be another cyberpunk. But we'll see. Um, I really hope it's not, and I, I hope it is good. Um, First game but is so good. Been... That, like there's just been so much controversy around and that was another thing they didn't address any of that and i really think they should have done if it's going to be an, an update about what's going on with the game you've got to address all the allegations going on with your studio they market it because as like was... an internal update and then they didn't talk about anything going on yeah so they didn't talk about the studio they didn't talk about the writer main writers being fired kind of because of like allegations and things last year and all this kind of stuff they didn't mention any of it and it's they may not think it's important but in reality it's it's very important because it gives you a sense into what the developers are thinking because sure the people they showed in that video were like yeah we're, we're working on the game guys it's not cancelled this it's all fine here behind closed doors you don't know what's going on yeah um and it could be a lot worse than that video may have have shown you know exactly. um so hopefully it 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 ends up being good but i don't know i just uh, look, yeah look i I'm don't the care when this game comes out i just want it to be good people have been waiting for this game for ages i was kind of like disappointed by the news that it's coming out this year because everything that we've been hearing made it seem like this game should be delayed until like next year at the earliest like who knows obviously it, you know we're playing a game of simon says based on like what was going on inside but there's pretty good evidence that you know internally it hasn't been the best situation there in terms of writers and all that um yeah, obviously, you know, games should come out when they're ready, so if it is ready for this year, cool, but if it's not, like, I'm a bit hesitant that it's not ready, but they're just going to push it out just because they should, right, in their eyes. So, who knows? I just want this game to be good, uh, especially after this long wait that it's been since, you know, the first game, so. Like, you're already, you're already good in terms of the your fans', you know, eyes, right, in terms of all the DLC you did for, you know, Dying Light 1, the original game, everyone loved it. Just don't fuck it up by pushing this game out before it's you know it's ready. So, yeah, hopefully that situation goes well by the end of the year if it's still coming out this year. But yeah. In other news, uh, personal you know news topic for me, I guess Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne finally got a release date for the West. Um, this has been out in the Japan uh, scene for I want to say till since October, end of October. Um, finally got a you know West date, which is nice, May 25th, 2021, so what, a little over two months away, not too bad. Again, this is coming out for PS5, uh, technically PS4, and uh, Switch. Um, this is the remaster of Shin Megami Tensei 3, which originally came out on the PS2, one of the best uh, games on at least the Shin Megami Tensei series. It's a beloved classic, definitely recommend it. I know I have like an agenda for this game because I'm always trying to push it, but generally it's a really good RPG, um, so very excited for that. Charlie, you gonna be picking this up, trying it out? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot coming out in May. Um, yeah, that's so very I might true. not pick it up like at launch, but I'll definitely give it a try at some point. It, but it might be just I wait and a copy comes in at work or something. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll give it a go, um, and pick it up or something. But I'm definitely interested in trying it because obviously you you go on about it so much, so it must be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think like if you like the kind of like it's not similar to Persona, right? Um, it is art, like kind of thrown around as like the Big Brother series, that persona that started it all. It has a bigger focus on gameplay, which I like over dialogue and like relationships, um, which is why I personally like it. Um, just because like it keeps me engaged in terms of like very addicting combat loops and focusing on you know skill and all that. Um, yeah, that's not to say it doesn't have a cool you know world and everything. Like that's also another charm of the series is its music, atmosphere, and world. Um, but yeah, just look it up. Go look up some you know trailers. I'm sure a lot of our viewers have our, at least seen the trailer, right? So coming out soon here. Very exciting. And yeah, 
PlayStation announced um, some more games coming to the Play at Home initiative. We talked about, you know, a few weeks ago, I want to say, that Ratchet and Clank was the first of many. And then in that, we also teased that they said, you know, indie games were coming out soon. Um, here they are, essentially. Um, they said indie games. A lot of these are actually like VR games, which are pretty cool. I think, like, I don't have it in front of me here, but I think they had like Thumper, Astrobot, Moss, Res, Infinite, um, The Witness, uh, Enter the Gungeon and there's a few more games there but yeah definitely a really good slate of games they also announced that horizon complete edition will be coming for free in the month of april so yeah it's obviously very smart for them to have ratchet and clank and horizon you know two games that are going to be getting sequels for the ps5 very soon here uh, very smart move from sony there as well as some really cool vr and indie games so definitely really cool to see any games stick out for you i know you mentioned possibly starting at um, enter the gungeon right yeah, End of the Gungeon's one that I've heard about for years and just never picked up, um, so I'm interested in trying that one out. Um, Res Infinite, I remember playing the demo years ago on, on PSVR, um, so I'll probably give that a go, um, especially because I, I know this isn't like the VR-specific version, like you can play this without VR, so I'll, I'll probably just play it without because I can't be asked to <laughs> set up the whole, uh, whole headset. Um, and yeah, there's a, f a few other cool games there. And then Horizon as well. Uh, I never played the DLC, um, so I'll probably get around to that at some point over the summer before um, Forbidden West comes out, if it does come out this year, which hopefully it will. Um, so yeah, th those are kind of like the three three main ones that interest me the most. Yeah, well, I said this again, like back in the Ratchet um, news, but you don't need to have PS Plus. These are just free games. As long as you have a yeah. PSN account, go grab them. There's no reason not to pick them up, and then you'll own them forever. So definitely really cool to see there. Um, and yeah, in other news, Destruction All Stars got kind of an update in terms of what the next year or so the game's going to look around. It's very vague. They just kind of announced that they're going to be having seasons. So I think the first one um, is going to be starting up here in April. That's going to last until, I want to say, June or July. Um, they said that they're going to have things like a battle pass. They're going to have, um, new all-stars joining the ring, new modes and all that. Um, which is pretty good. I think that's essentially what the game kind of needed. I will say this stuff probably should have been planned a bit sooner if they wanted this game to take off. Um, I feel like it's what, it's been like over a month now since the game initially came out. Um, definitely really cool to see that it's going to get updates. I'm not sure how many people are still playing the game. I know I personally haven't touched it in over a month. Um, I do sometimes have a, you know, inkling or inkling uh kind of feeling to go back into that game because it is generally pretty fun just to you know play with a few friends and have mindless fun in that game but yeah what'd you take from this charlie yeah i mean i mean it's cool i, I think the plan by the looks of things is to have the first season start when it comes out of ps plus mm -hmm. um because it does come out of ps plus at the start of april so i would imagine this first season is starting when it's a paid game because it is going to have like a paid battle pass and stuff um, they did also say that adding like competitive in like ranked don't really know how that will work in a game like this because um, a lot of the time it's not skill based so I don't I don't really know how that will work um, but yeah I'll, I'll dive back in occasionally I haven't played it in a few weeks um, mainly because I've just been so busy that when I do play stuff there's set Higher games priorities. that I really want to play yeah, yeah. So when I have more time and stuff, uh, I will probably dive back in. But right now, I, I just haven't had a chance to play it. You know, still cool to see that they're supporting the game. Because obviously, it's better than just letting it die and dry out, right? Yeah, so exactly. Who knows? I mean, what they said here is, like, honestly, all the right things they needed to say. You know, things like a battle pass or ranked um, seasons and all that is, like, what the game needs, right? To order to continue being fresh and have progression in this game um so yeah really cool to see hopefully you know the first season when it comes out next month will be cool i'll probably definitely check it out and see what's new so cool stuff from them at lucid games um another news disco elysium this is actually a personal you know announcement for me that i was looking forward to finally coming out here um the final cut version of the game which essentially is still the base game but it has some extra you know side missions or side characters i should say that kind of flesh out the murder investigation a bit more um it also is going to add dialogue um, to certain characters as well. That Final Cut version got announced for March 30th for PS5 and PS4. First time Disco Elysium, I believe, is coming to console in general, so really cool to see. Um, if you don't know Disco Elysium, I think it won like Best Narrative at the Game Awards in 2020, or 2019, rather. Um, I played like the first hour or two. I do want to go back to it, but now I'm thinking I might wait until the Final Cut update comes out, just because you know things like dialogue and all that um, will help. 
in terms of you know getting into that world right so i'll probably wait personally but still very cool to see that it's only a matter of a few weeks and now personally a few friends that were looking forward to this um to jump into the game so really cool to see there are you interested in disco lucy metal charlie it's one i've looked into a few times um i don't know if it's something i would really enjoy it is like that classic fallout kind of style right so mm. i'd, I'd it's something that I know a lot of people love, and I know it's meant to be great. Um, it's one I've had my eye on. Uh, I, I won't buy it when it comes out, but maybe when there's like a price drop or something, um, maybe I'll give it a go. But I'd, I'd probably play it on PC anyway. Um, it's the, it's not the kind of game I would play on, on console anyway. So Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the Final Cut should be a free update for PC. I'll be waiting for that. Um, and yeah, definitely still really cool to talk about. Um, Jade Raymond, uh, she had a past, you know, record of, you know, I think she worked on Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, and then ever since Watch Dogs 1, she's had like a bunch of startup games that got canned, kind of similar story to Amy Hennig. I think me and Charlie were talking about this a bit earlier, things like Motive's new IP recently was canceled, she was ahead of that. Um, she was also working, what was else she was working on, um, with Ubisoft that got canned as well. There's a few projects, essentially, so since like 2014, she hasn't really had anything come out. Um, this week, she announced that she's starting up her own studio called Haven. Um, there's a big blog post about it that goes into the specifics. It's essentially listing, like, you know, their morales for the, you know, company, what they stand by, and their past record and all that. Um, but the big thing was they're partnering with PlayStation for exclusive IP coming to PS5. I saw a lot of people take this the wrong way. They're not acquired by PlayStation. They're essentially kind of like a signing an exclusive deal with them for their first game. That's going to be a new IP for PS5, so... You know, still a big announcement regardless. You know, anytime a new studio gets formed like that, it's pretty big for the industry considering we're not exactly the biggest. Um, but yeah, still very cool news. Do you have anything to take away from this or want to add to that, Charlie? Yeah, I think it could be really cool uh, for a couple of reasons. I mean, she's worked on a lot of projects that I have been interested in. Um, like I was super interested in the, in the Visceral Star Wars game, which she was working on at Motive and then um she was working on the new motive ip which again looked pretty interesting um she also was working with google for the new stadia team um but unfortunately when that was shut down she she left google um so this is where she is now i do know that haven you they currently aren't hiring people um so it seems that the people they are hiring are veterans of the industry and so i would imagine this is going to be a really cool team filled with a lot of people from various studios that are well known which is always a good sign um so yeah i'm i'm excited to see what this ends up being um exclusives are always cool to see especially when it's a new ip as well so yeah definitely really cool news there i think like the haven name i think they mentioned it's supposed to be like a haven for gamers and also game developers so it seems like that at least having a big focus on like the health of their employees which is always cool to see especially given jade raymond's like past few years i imagine that's what she wants the most right so yeah you know really cool announcement there and i'm sure we'll see it sometime in the next few years um seems like it's something that just started so probably going to wait at least a few years before we see any sort of concrete um kind of showing up that game anyways for our final news story uh this one actually really surprised me when i dropped this morning yeah sony actually dropped more information on the next generation vr headset you know ps5 vr psvr2 whatever you want to call it um they showed off actual physical hardware they showed off the new controllers for the first time they talked about this in their blog post a few weeks back um but you could see the physical controller i'll probably place an image right here for you to see visually um yeah, there's nothing really surprising here. This is actually all the bells and whistles I want. Um, I think it not being surprising is a good thing, though, because obviously, you know, it's including everything that's kind of standard to the industry now. Things like, obviously, a thumbstick, um, finger sensors. So this is something that's more akin to the Oculus Touch rather than the Knuckles, where it can detect when your fingers are placed in certain areas. So it doesn't seem like that prototype from last year where it had, like, full-on finger tracking will be in this, you know, commercial product, at least. Um, but still, it, you know... It's still definitely miles ahead of what the moves are currently capable of doing. Um, so that looks really cool. There's things like haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, essentially the two big you know features of the DualSense. Um, and then I think the biggest one that stood out for me was the ergonomics of this thing. Like it has a ring on the outer shell. Um, it definitely looks different than compared to like any sort of other hand controller in the VR industry at the moment. But um, definitely looks really cool nonetheless. I like how it's all 
you know, black. I do think that the fact that it is an all-black controller might be hinting that the headset itself might be black. I don't know. Like, obviously, the moves were black and the headset was white. But if you look at it, like, the DualSense was white. The PS5 was white. I imagine the headset's going to want to mimic somewhat of what the controller looks like. So we might be looking at a case where the, you know, final headset is going to also look black. But nonetheless, you know, controller looks nice. It has all the bells and whistles that you kind of expect. Uh, what do you think about it, Charlie? Yeah, I, th I think overall it looks like a pretty cool controller. Um, the things that stand out to me the most, like you said, this seems to be more akin to an Oculus Touch controller rather than like the Index Knuckles controllers, mainly because there's no strap for your hand to go on, so you're not going to be able to fully let go of the controller, and there is a grip button there, like you find on the, the Oculus Touch controllers, um, as well as the tracking ring. So the, the big ring that's going around the bottom of the controller, that is what the headset is using to track, so it basically confirms it is inside out tracking which is Thank great God. to see um i know you said like um there's not really anything that looks like this there is um actually from pimax the sword controllers which um still haven't come out they, they announced them i, I want to say a year or two ago now um and they have a very very similar style of tracking uh where they have a you hold the controller and there's a ring that basically goes around your wrist um okay. that's on the bottom of the controller which is what it uses for tracking the only major difference with them is that this does not have finger tracking, whereas this does. I mean, it does have finger tracking, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the Pimax has like full on uh, finger tracking, like with the index. They do say on here that it does have finger touch detection, but I imagine that is, like it says, Oculus just touch. for gestures, mm -hmm. like the Oculus Touch. So you can do a thumbs up, or you can do a middle finger, or you can do like a rock on sign. Like it's it'll be very basic stuff, um, but it's it looks like a cool controller. Having the sticks there is great. Uh, like I thought, the adaptive triggers are a big thing, which is great. Um, that's the one thing that I would have loved for them to to bring over from the control. So I'm glad they do. They do have the haptics, which will be interesting to see. Um, I am a little bit worried about the tracking ring because it is very big and yeah. does stick out a lot. Um, so it, it might be a bit of a problem. Like you might accidentally hit stuff a bit more <laughs> easier than uh, with other controllers. Um, either way, this just gets me more excited to see what the headset looks like, honestly. I imagine we'll probably see the headset get shown off because the thing is they probably announced this because, as they mentioned, the blog posts are sending out dev kits so they want to officially yeah. get the word out there before, you know, developers leak it on their own. Kind of a similar story to how the dual sensors was revealed like a year ago. So I imagine the headsets also, I imagine, is going to be sent out as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see in a few weeks here that they announce the official headset and maybe give us some specs too. Um, I feel like that's probably the biggest thing that's going to get leaked is like the specs on the headset rather than the look. Um, I think mm. that's also how like the initially the index was leaked, right? In terms of what it was going to contain on the inside. So we'll probably hear about that, I imagine, before, you know, May, June. Um, yeah, the exciting only thing, The only thing that makes me think we won't see the headset for a little while is that obviously the headset is literally just a display. So they can still be working on um, content without having the the new headset but the controllers do require the headset to be tracked so i imagine the we'll specs see. at least will get announced then right because that's something yeah that's i mean that's what they did with like ps5 late. and stuff yeah um, exactly so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a blog post saying here's what the new headset is capable of doing and it'll be all the resolution and then we'll get images of the headset like with this when they uh when they send out dev kits but it's it's good to see they're sending them out this this early i know um, i'm surprised kind of i'm surprised we're getting so, this much information i wasn't expecting to hear about psvr yeah. until like the second half of this year at the yeah, earliest yeah, same so it's really yeah. cool to see i still don't think this thing's going to come out until like fall of next year but you know i'm getting dev couch you know dev kits early is really good i think the only last concern i have is again with the backwards compatibility i was talking to my friend today and like with those you know play at home games coming out with like astrobot and moss like Hopefully those games will be enhanced or at least playable in backwards compatibility with this new headset. Um, I think the only constraint there is in terms of like, you know, the tracking, right? Obviously PSVR used the light balls um, for, you know, tracking. This is presumably going to be inside out tracking based on what we saw in terms of the uh, hand controllers. So who knows? Just VR is going to be really cool on PS5. The fact that, you know, inside out tracking was practically confirmed today means that all you need is a single cable. 
which is really cool to see. I imagine we'll be using that USB-C slot at the very front of the console, which I hardly really use right now. Um, but yeah, definitely really cool to see. And I imagine we'll probably hear more soon. So definitely really cool to see. Anything else you wanted to add before I guess we conclude this week's episode? Um, I think that's that's about it, really. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Shame Definitely good bit of news. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still have quite a bit to talk about, to be honest, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of cool news topics. Um, definitely you know, a lot today, at least. Um, and, yeah, we'll see you, I guess, next week for episode 19, which will be coming out next week and should include the return of Justin himself. So, yeah. That being said, I've been online and Charlie, and we'll see you next week for episode 19. Take care. See you later.